So hi, Angelica. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm so excited to have you on. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, Alora. So how have things been going? What have you been up to? Oh, I have been preparing for this release and wrapping up all things Happy Place, although it doesn't seem to be wrapping up. The streams keep going, which is so great. <laughs> awesome. um, and I'm playing a show tomorrow at the Moonshine, so <laughs> I'm uh, practicing for that. And yeah, just getting ready for festival season. I'm really excited. <laughs> Awesome. Well, have fun at your show. I should probably go see it. Like I live, I live in Oakville. So do you come and yeah. see it? I would love for you to come. What are you up to? I should, I feel like people probably yeah. don't ask that to you all the time. Well, that's okay. It's about you. So <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to get my background sorted out and uh, yeah. <laughs> love that. It looks great. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's get right into it. Uh, so what made you get into music in the first place? Um, I grew up in a musical family. Um, my mom plays guitar, my sisters play piano, and we grew up in the church choir. So um, I've been around music my entire life. We always had music blasting, whether it was Italian tunes or, um, <laughs> yeah, because my nono, he really loved to sing. Um, and so there was like all those fun Italian songs that we would grow up listening to, as well as like, we just always had country music blasting throughout the house. My uh, middle sister introduced me to Shania Twain and all of the like great, yeah, all of the great '90s country girls. And honestly, it was uphill from there. <laughs> awesome. I also read that you like to put on concerts when you were a kid for your family. Uh, yeah, we did. <laughs> um, me and my cousin, we actually look a lot alike, although okay. I'm like five feet taller than her but back then I wasn't so we used to dress up um the same like twins and stuff and uh we were at my cottage or I believe it was my aunt's cottage and um we dressed up like Shania put on like cowboy hats did a little man I feel like a woman and then my sisters joined in and we always had like little concerts we have a huge driveway so we would put on like Spice Girls concert or I think we did Shania probably like once a week at some point <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome I love, I love Shania it. I like grew up on that come on over CD like yes so I feel yeah. you on that <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh you also went to university for uh, music right I did I went to U of T in Sheridan College um mm -hmm. it was for the theater and drama studies program mm -hmm. but there was like a lot of focus in uh vocals and performance and vocals there um I worked with some amazing coaches and yeah it was intense <laughs> it was I'm really really fortunate to have gone there and to have worked with some of the best of the best so was it more musical theater kind of stuff um no it was, more, it was more acting mm, okay. um but because I loved music so much I wanted to focus more on that <laughs> so I would be like doing uh extra vocal classes outside of school um with the coaches there at Sheridan College okay. um yeah. <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh my gosh people are still doing fireworks apparently in my so is that a firework <laughs> yeah that was terrifying I'm so sorry you it's okay out. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> um where was I yeah um and for our last two years they just like really prepared us for um anything so we did a lot of like film and television acting as well as musical theater and I just always loved to sing and they always got me to be um a part of like I was the vocal director of all the shows mm -hmm. Um, and I was the music director, so I just always tried to get involved in music anytime I could. Cool. Is like acting something you want to do as well, or like you do do? Um, I actually did do it for some time, which was a lot of fun. Um, but I always kind of felt like singing, like was always where my like soul was <laughs> leading to. And, um, I actually had an, a coach, um, at my school tell me you know you come alive when you sing and I was like oh that's really cool and they're like you're much more like believable when you're when you're singing and I was like that's really cool like a cool thing to notice and I always just felt like so much more comfortable mm -hmm. um singing and performing um than like actually playing other characters I I would always say to my uh teachers and stuff I'd be like but like, I would never do that. <laughs> and they were like, they're like, well, you'll probably do better in like film and television, which is where I kind of ended up. And mm. I really just feel like I'm a very like a empathetic person. So I always approach a role from that kind of place. And I think that's also what makes me uh, a unique songwriter as mm -hmm. well. 
Awesome. So like, have you done any like film and television or like I have. what's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was on like those fun, like reenactment shows. Okay. Um, and I played like a lot of leads in that. That was fun. Um, I did some background acting and mm-hmm. what's really cool about background acting is like, it's all about like a look, right? So yeah. I think I was like 16 or something. And they were like, you look like this girl's sister do you want to get pushed into a pool and say this line and I was like (laughs) uh yeah I do (laughs) um so I ended up getting an actor uh credit for Mm. the show LA Complex oh yeah um which was really cool yeah awesome Mm -hmm. have you done anything like recently or is that something like you're just kind of moving forward from um I do a lot of like community um acting well I did do a lot of community acting the last show that I did was really special um it was for uh to create awareness for uh human trafficking Mm -hmm. and we toured it all across Ontario to a bunch of schools to hotels and uh we worked with um the sexual assault prevention center Mm -hmm. um here in Kitchener and we had like a talk back after the show um and it was like honestly, it was a life-changing experience because um, you learned a lot about it. And it's like a very prevalent issue, especially in in our area, because we're so close to the highway. Mm-hmm. So you learn the signs and then you realize just like how young these people, like these young girls and, and boys and stuff are being coerced. And um, yeah, we got to talk to some survivors and things like that. So it was it was very emotional. Yeah, I bet. I'm very, very glad to be a part of it, though. It's like definitely something I'll always remember. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. And mm-hmm. that's such like, a great thing to um, advocate for, too, because it is very prevalent and it doesn't get talked about a whole lot. No. And like I watch a lot of true crime. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like I'm kind of aware of what that the problem of that is. And yeah, it is really important that it is, you know, brought to the surface and um, mm-hmm. people are aware of the situation yeah for sure. good. <laughs> but good job I'm doing yeah, that <laughs> awesome well let's get good to back. my part yes. <laughs> well let's get to some of your music because this okay. is why we're here <laughs> yeah uh so you picked three of your own songs and three songs that have inspired or influenced you but you had two songs out so mm-hmm. we're gonna play two of your songs and yeah. four songs that have inspired or influenced you awesome. uh so you have your new single called guilt trip so mm-hmm. what's the story behind that song Um, so I won't lie. Um, I had a conversation, um, with someone where I came out of that conversation and I was like the double standards we have. And I was just feeling like, honestly, the word guilt trip was like what kept going on. I was like, why am I being guilted for like, you know, my success or like for who I am as a person, like, it was basically someone telling me it was cute that I was doing music. Oh. And, and I was like, oh, very interesting. Like that um, you would, you would use those words because you wouldn't use that for any other profession. Yeah. Um, and so I just got home and I was like, I feel like I'm being guilt tripped. I just kept writing out guilt trip, guilt trip, <laughs> guilt trip. And I knew that I had a uh, co-write session coming up with two pretty like badass girls um, in the country scene, Jesse T um, and Amanda Kind. And then as well, my producer, Matt. And I wanted to write like a girl power sort of anthem or like a strong woman sort of anthem. And I brought this idea to them and it was actually so therapeutic. We were all just kind of relaying all of our experiences that we've had as women um, in this industry or outside of this industry. And I really wanted the song to be kind of like a journey. So um, in the first verse, you kind of get like what you're told as a young girl. And then the second verse is more like, what you hear as a teenager and then finally you're an adult and you're like I'm getting out of here like I'm getting off of this guilt trip um and I actually personally got to a point where I was like I've been hearing these things my entire life from from different areas from the industry from you know um male dominated uh career structures and things like that and I was just like 
we don't, we don't have to listen to this. <laughs> um, and we can take our power back. And I don't think that it's one of those songs that's just for women, although obviously it's coming from my perspective. I think it can be for anybody who's ever been like marginalized or um, a minority or anything like that. Um, anybody who's been silenced um, for, you know, trying to speak their, their truth or, um, you know, it, it can even be for men who, you know, have more feminine energy that are told they're not manly enough. Um, and it's basically a lot about societal expectations and saying like, I don't have to do it your way and I can, you know, pave my own path and I can be proud of the success that I have, who doesn't matter who I am kind of thing. So we really like, we're just going <laughs> at it in this, in this go, right. And to be honest, even though it was uh, three women, just like relaying their experiences, Matt also was a part of the right. And he was like, he had some really great perspective as well, because he's the only guy in the right. And he was saying, you know, I've seen this in, in um, his profession. And he's also, he was also learning a lot too. So it was, it was cool to have that um, and to know that there are allies. And it was really important for me to, you know, make sure that this isn't like, obviously like a man hating song. That's not <laughs> what it is. Um, it's more about just like owning who you are, owning your success and um, getting off the guilt trip. Awesome. I love that. It's such an important message too, because mm -hmm. like, we're always like, especially with social media, we're so like, um, get caught up in listening to what other people say, like comments or what other people are doing. And it's, oh, yeah. I've, like for me personally, I really had to learn to just like, Put my head down and like not pay attention <laughs> and just do my own thing and have fun <laughs> mm -hmm. and anytime that I've ever actually you know what I'm gonna just be so candid with you go for it <laughs> um I actually was going through a tough time as I was releasing this song because it's it's a very tricky topic that I feel like could be misconstrued mm -hmm. um and you kind of are dancing around it or you're walking on eggshells a little bit and you really have to choose the right words and everything so it's not interpreted wrong mm -hmm. and I was really having a difficult time with how am I going to market this mm -hmm. and I was listening to you know a lot of people in my life who you know helped me a lot with the success of happy place and um I kind of let them get into my head a little bit mm -hmm. and let like sort of the, that's not your brand. How could the girl oh. who, who um, released Happy Place also be the girl who released Guilt Trip? <laughs> yeah. And I, it was, it was a struggle for me and I had to, and I was listening to all these different opinions. And then one day I just sat down and I really listened to my own song and I listened to the words and I started to cry. Aww. And I was like, oh my gosh, Angelica you wrote this as a pep talk to yourself so that you don't have to ever go through what exactly you're saying in the song. And so it was really like ironic that I was in, I was going through it and my own song actually helped me realize to take my power back, to own my accomplishments and, and to, go forth and do what I wanted to do and how I wanted to market the song. Cause after all, I wrote the words, I brought the idea, you know, yeah. so why would I want to shy away from something um, that was a truth for me? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. It's so very authentic. Being candid. <laughs> I love that. And I love how like your song, like, like you kind of get the meaning kind of afterwards sometimes I find mm -hmm. I for me I'm a songwriter too sometimes I like I get it afterwards I write it yeah. and like, oh that's what that means mm -hmm. and I think yeah that's where you get the impact from and that's very authentic to you and yeah. I love that especially because you're rocking out half the time which yeah. is so great <laughs> awesome well let's get to that song so here is guilt trip uh so what made you get into songwriting um, I think I call it like Taylor Swifting my way through high school. Okay. <laughs> um, I've kind of like coined that as a verb <laughs> um, <I love> that. <laughs> because um, I actually struggled a lot in, in high school to uh, express my feelings. And 
um, I had a lot of like health issues and I went through like a lot of um, bullying and like I was very like underdeveloped and stuff like that. So um, I would just go home and be an angsty little teenager <laughs> like Taylor Swift and I'd write all these <laughs> songs about what I was going through. But honestly, it was a way to kind of get through these like more difficult times in my life. And I felt like it was the only way that I actually felt like relief. Um, I would finish writing the song and I'd be like, even if it was the worst song ever, and trust me, some of my like, <laughs> some of my songs at 13, although some had some good ideas, but most of them obviously aren't gonna be your best songs. But like, I look back and I'm just like, wow, you were like so brave and you didn't overthink any of it. And I felt like that was, that's why I also call it Taylor Swifting because she was so honest mm, yeah. um, back then and still is today, but yeah, definitely learned a lot from her for sure. Oh, <laughs> and I, I read you recently began co-writing. Mm -hmm. So how has that been like compared to writing for yourself? <laughs> it was honestly, it was crazy. Um, but it's, it's like changed the whole game <laughs> completely <laughs> because honestly, some of these people that I've been writing with are geniuses. And especially when I went down to Nashville, I was like, Ooh, <laughs> boy, do we got to step up our game? <laughs> like, um, but it was really inspiring too. And, um, it's just so great to see like the different perspectives and how people bounce off of each other. And I always love how, if I'm stuck on something, or if I can't quite find the way to express it, somebody else is like, what if we did this? And it's almost like you have one mind, which is really cool. Um, but it was a bit of a struggle at, at first because for the longest time I was like, I really wanted to hold on to my ideas. Mm -hmm. And that was like a really tough thing to let go of because I was like, I was doing it alone for so long. And then learning to let go and letting it go where it needs to go was was probably the biggest lesson that I learned and also learning to listen to other people as well and be like it's you're really excited when you're in the room and you also want to like prove yourself mm -hmm. a lot of the times I feel a lot of people are like when they're in their room if they're silent they're like oh no I didn't contribute anything to the song <laughs> um but sometimes it's the moments of silence they're like the times when you're listening that like the coolest ideas hmm. come to you hmm. yeah interesting yeah it's a good way to look at it or your perspective on it where it's hmm. like you don't have to necessarily prove yourself all the time but listening is more important than you know just saying stuff for the sake of saying stuff and also if you come out of there and you like learn like a tool or something to be a better songwriter for your next session mm -hmm. then like that's amazing because there's some rights where I'll write the majority of the song and then there's some rights where I just sit there in awe <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like I got my one third in <laughs> all that matters <laughs> one third or one word one third <laughs> yeah awesome well let's get to some more music so the next song you have for us is tougher by Lainey Wilson so what made you pick this song um so when I heard this song I'm gonna sound like an emotional blub <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> but when I heard this song, I basically cried and um, it means so, so much to me because like, I basically feel like I went through this and it reminds me of my health struggles and it reminds me of all of the things that I have done or gone through to get to this point. And sometimes people don't always see the sacrifices and I don't necessarily like to talk about it that much. But when you hear these songs about like, you're gonna make it through one way or the other, life is tough, but this girl's tougher. Um, it just, it reminds you of your own strength um, when you hear this song. So I just thought it was super special. Awesome. Well, here is Tougher by Lainey Wilson. So, your Insta bio says you're on a mission to bring back 90s country. Yes. So what inspired that? <laughs> um, just me growing up on these amazing 90s gals. And like, I just miss the like, the soaring vocals and I miss the powerhouse moments. And you don't hear that as much anymore. Um, 
And I feel like I kind of sort of have that style or that timbre to my voice. Mm -hmm. And I've always been inspired by people like Faith Hill, Martina McBride, uh, Leanne Rhymes, uh, Leanne Womack. And I just miss those little diva moments. I won't lie <laughs> in songs. And um, also just the storytelling was much more vivid uh, back then. And um, I don't know how they did it. I mean, they had four minutes <laughs> to, to do it back then. Now we have to do it in less than three. Um, but I just find that like the storytelling was just much more vivid and um, heartfelt. Like there was so much more heart in it. And I miss hearing a banjo every so often. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I also just think because I grew up on it, um, it, it would always have like a big place in my heart for sure. So I'm like, well, if, if I was gonna bring it back and if it kind of resembles my voice, then why not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the nineties were a great time for country. Like it was oh, really yeah. at like a boom at that time. Mm -hmm. so there was so much good music <laughs> not to mention the females were killing it oh yeah and like I I often say this because I think it's like important to say like Shania was at the top Faith Hill was at the top Martina was at the top and like even though there were guys at the top as well it just like it isn't like that today mm -hmm. like it's very difficult like you go on playlists and like you barely see women at the top of the the charts Mm -hmm. And I don't think the caliber of talent has really changed. So it'd be great to like get back to those powerhouse females yeah. taking over as well mm -hmm. and like getting their recognition as well. Yeah. Awesome. All of that. Mm -hmm. Let's bring back the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's get to some more of your music. Woo. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> the next song you have for us is your song called Happy Place. So what's the story behind that song? This is another special one for me. Um, I was having a lovely day with my nieces and my nephew and um, I took a picture with them and I captioned it, my happy place. And that's really what my happy place is. It's all about, it was during the pandemic. It was the first summer that we could actually kind of have a bubble. And um, it just reminded me that you don't really need a whole lot of extravagant things or trips or anything. It just matters like the people that you have with you right next to you. And for me, it was my littles. And I just thought also about um, my best friend and uh, her relationship. And she's also her and her husband are also in my my music video. And I thought about like their relationship and how they literally just take the simplest things and they make like such an adventure about it. Um, and they're just happy with each other's company. And like, that's all you really need. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Was this your debut single then? It was. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Well, let's get to that song. So here is Happy Place. So uh, you're currently working on an EP. So what's that process been like? Um, it's been busy. Yeah. I, um, I already have another summer single that's coming out um, in July that I'm excited mm. about. Um, and we've, we actually just added that song to uh, the EP last minute because we were like, we've got Happy Place, we've got Guilt Trip, we need that like song that bridges the two in between. And um, I played this song uh, at a few writers rounds and it was really well received. And I love it. And I thought it was the perfect fit for in between. Um, so we were quickly getting that one out of the shoot. I actually have um, one of the writers on this song, David Madras. Um, he's awesome. If you don't know him, go look him up. Um, <laughs> he's uh, doing the background vocals on, on this new song. So I'm excited about that. And it's very special because we wrote it together and now he gets to be a part of it. Um, and the EP is called A Reason or a Season, and uh, part of it is all of the different uh, seasons that you go through uh, in relationships or um, just different stages in your life. So um, Happy Place obviously shows, you know, a more lovey-dovey <laughs> time. U-Turn um, is the one coming out in July, and that one is more about like just before that kind of uh, jump into the lovey-dove <laughs> part where you're a little skeptical, but then you're like, 
maybe this could be the person that like could change my skepticism. <laughs> um, guilt trip is more of like, I would say you're more sure of yourself and you're kind of coming into your own and, and owning who you are. Um, and that was a really cool time to, in my life, um, when I got to that place and I'm, I'm still working on it every day, of course. Um, and then the other two songs are, um, songs about loss and not just, um, about relationships like romantic relationships, but, um, friendships, uh, as well. So the one song is about a breakup with a best friend. And that was actually the song that came very quickly um as a number one choice for the album because that was that pretty much changed the whole trajectory of my life um <laughs> as soon as i had that breakup with my best friend i kind of had an epiphany where i was like i'm better off now even though it's super bittersweet but i felt like i was just held back so much mm -hmm. by this relationship and i couldn't quite do all the things that i wanted to do and once I was able to, you know, distance myself from that person, um, I, it opened doors for me to do music and mm. to, you know, take things a lot more seriously. And um, I think everybody kind of goes through that in their 20s or, you know, um, some point in their life because yeah. you and that's the whole point as well. Like, you never know if that person's going to be in your life forever or if they're just there for a season. And for me, I thought that she would be there forever, but life has different <laughs> <laughs> plans sometimes. And sometimes you just can't see it, but it, it was for the better. No, well, I love that. And I'm really looking forward to when that com that's coming out. So, um, well, let's get to some more music. So the next song you have for us is I Hope You Dance by Leanne Womack. So why'd you pick this song? Um, so this song is actually a family special song. Um, my sister gave this to us in a picture frame, um, just the lyrics when we were really little and she couldn't afford <laughs> any gifts. Um, and it just was always one of those like comforting songs of like, you know, be grateful. And I hope that you take every moment and you just live it basically. And that was sort of like the reminder and, um, we like to sing the background part together because it's kind of funny um and I just it's always one of those songs that I'd love to sing and I really do love to dance and I I do love to think about all of those things and like um it's just beautiful messaging really yeah it's such a great song mm -hmm. well here is I Hope You Dance by Leanne Womack so music isn't always the easiest of career paths so what motivates you towards uh to keep working towards your dreams? <laughs> um, well, I would say something that I just posted about recently, which is like when your music connects with um, other people that are listening and mm -hmm. especially a younger audience. Um, and I actually just posted about how a father told me that he wants his daughter to listen to songs like Guilt Trip. Aww. And I was like, dang man this is like why we do it you know like that was a really cool moment and I think like just remembering like I've always been so passionate about music and just remembering that I'm like doing this for myself and I'm doing this because I feel like I have like a unique perspective to relate to the world and um yeah honestly if you're not doing it because you love it then like why are you doing it because <laughs> it yeah. is tough right mm -hmm. like you got to constantly remind yourself why you love it, why you do it. And that's what will keep you going, I think. Awesome. I love that. Mm -hmm. You have such good perspectives on things. Oh, thank you. Oh. I have parents that are <laughs> that are really, really good at keeping me grounded. Because if I didn't, well, we're Italian, right? So mm -hmm. if I didn't, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's get to some more music. So the next song you have for us is Somebody Like That by Tamille Arts. So why'd you pick this song? Um, so I'm just obsessed with this song. <laughs> um, and it was actually the inspiration behind the song Happy Place. Okay. Um, when I heard this song, I obviously loved it so much. And I was like, I want to create my own version of somebody like that. Um, and that's where Happy Place came from. 
but also I think Tennille Arts is like a gift to Canadian country music. Mm -hmm. I think she's pretty, like she's definitely an inspiration for me in terms of like music and lyrics and everything. She's a, an advocate for mental health. Um, and I also think she does a really, really great job of bridging both a 90s country sound and the contemporary sound. So I had to put one of her songs in <laughs> just to make sense for it to be the one that inspired Happy Place. Awesome. Well, here is Somebody Like That by Tennille Arts. <laughs> <laughs> you, want me to, you didn't want me to sing all the songs, right? <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I, I, you need to sing all the songs, actually. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this last part is five quick questions. So it's whatever comes to your mind first, just for fun. So the first question is, what's your favorite snack food? Ooh, chocolate covered almonds. Mm. Uh, one place you'd love to travel to? Uh, Italy. Uh, favorite holiday? Um, Christmas? Christmas or my birthday? Is my birthday a holiday? Sure, why not? <laughs> 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 okay, we'll say Christmas. That's more normal. <laughs> uh, cats or dogs? Uh, dogs. And favorite TV show? One Tree Hill. Hmm. I'm obsessed with One Tree Hill. <laughs> I've watched it probably 15 times. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's and your favorite? Um, probably Gilmore Girls. Oh, I love Gilmore Girls too. They came out around the same time. Yeah, same kind of yeah. era. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. And uh, where can people find you? Um, they can find me at Angelica Appleman, A-P-P-E-L-M-A-N, um, on Insta, uh, TikTok, I believe is the same, um, YouTube, actually, I think it's everything, okay. um, all of the social media platforms, as well as I'm everywhere on Spotify, Amazon, Apple Music, I would love for you to listen to my songs. <laughs> and I'll have that all linked below in the show description, so you can just hit the links. And the last song you have for us is Road, Road Less Traveled by Lauren Elena. So why did you pick this song? Um, so I've always been somebody that um, if I am trying to take the path most traveled, <laughs> something goes awry and it never feels right inside. I'll either like become physically ill or it just never feels mm. right for me. Yeah. And I think any time that I've always gone on the road less traveled, um, where I'm sort of paving my own path or doing things my way, it feels much more authentic to me. Um, and I feel a lot better about doing things that way. I actually learned a lot about that in my uh, first release mm -hmm. by being like, I really wanted to take the like family route, whereas I could have totally been like, oh, this song is about like, love and all of that stuff but that wasn't true to me mm. um and I really wanted to make it authentic to me and I've never really liked to be somebody that's told oh you have to do it one way and that's it and I think even getting to where I am in music it's been a very strange twist and turn kind of kind of path anyways um so it just, it makes a lot of sense. And also Lauren Elaine is amazing. <laughs> this is a really tough song to sing. So I definitely admire her for her pipes. Um, I said this to somebody and I think it might blow your mind. Maybe <laughs> she sounds like Kelly Clarkson and Carrie Underwood like mm -hmm. together. Yeah, I can hear that. Sure. And I just think that's like the greatest kind of voice if you put it together. Um, and she's definitely such a great role model with um, what she says in the song and what she says in the industry. So why not? Awesome. Well, here is Road Less Traveled by Lauren Elena. But before that, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. Yeah. And thanks so much for listening. And be sure to come back next week for more country music.